insect infestation is something that plagues farmers, that plagues wholesalers. The housewife, when she goes to buy lettuce, is bothered by it because the reality is that we find bugs in our vegetables, in our lettuce. We have to check them, and it becomes a very major annoyance. When I was a boy growing up, that wasn't the world I lived in. You went to the store, bought a head of lettuce, and you knew fully well that there wasn't a bug to be found anywhere there. You could buy all types of vegetables without checking. There was no insect infestation. Why is that? Because many years ago, there was a chemical known as DDT that was then the insecticide that was being used, and it was incredibly effective at killing insects. The farmer brought the produce to market insect-free. However, something began happening that it took scientists many, many years to figure out. There are various species in the wild that were declining. One in particular, the bald eagle. The bald eagle that had been a robust, it was a symbol of our country, and had robust populations throughout the land. Suddenly, the populations were dwindling and dwindling, and no one knew why. Now, scientists were aware of dangers of DDT, and for various reasons, they stopped the production. Laws were passed, and DDT was not allowed to be used as an insecticide. They began using much less effective but much less potent insecticides. And when DDT was banned, some interesting things began changing. For some unknown reason, many populations of animals began rebounding. The bald eagle went from being in grave danger to now being far more common and eventually was taken off the endangered species list. The populations began expanding and expanding, and it took scientists a long time to recognize the why behind it. You see, what had been happening was the following. The farmer would spray DDT on his crops, and in fact, the DDT killed the insects, but trace elements of the DDT would get into the ground, and the rainwater would carry it away, and those trace elements of the DDT would end up in the lakes and the streams. The fish in those lakes and streams would swallow the water, including those very minuscule amounts of DDT. The eagle loves to eat salmon. Oftentimes, it would eat salmon that was infected with minuscule amounts of this DDT, and that created the problem. You see, when the eagle would eat this fish, that DDT would get into its body, and when it would lay its egg, the egg shell was just slightly too thin. Hence, when the eagle would sit on the egg to incubate it to keep it warm, it would crack the egg, and the next generation wouldn't come about. Once the DDT was stopped, eagles no longer ingested it. They no longer had the weakening, the thinner shell. They produced fully robust eggshells, and the next generations were born. The eagle population responded and rebounded beautifully. Now, here's the very interesting point. The eggshell is the geometrically perfect shape to keep the baby inside, keep the weight of the eagle supported, and yet gently spread out that weight. It's just the ideal shape that will allow a heavy mother to sit on the egg without crushing it. But the eggshell has to be the right thickness. With the DDT, the body of the eagle, the eggshell was just a tad too thin, and even though it was an ideal shape, nevertheless, the mother eagle crushed the eggshell. Once the DDT was removed, the body of the eagle began producing the correct thickness of the eggshell, and now, in fact, the eagle has rebounded. But here's the point. Do you know how to measure the thickness of an eggshell? If you have a micrometer that measures microns, you'll find that the difference between a proper eggshell and one that's too thin is not a hairbreadth, not a fraction of a hairbreadth, is almost not noticeable to the human eye. So how does the eagle know to create the exact right shape, the exact right thickness, and as long as nature isn't tampered with, will come generation after generation with a perfect egg. Who taught it to do that? Who taught its body to produce the egg with the embryo inside and fertilize with the male sperm? Who taught it to grow within it? Who taught it to put the yolk and everything needed for the formation of the next generation within it? When you begin studying the wonders of this creation, you see the wisdom of our Creator, you see the greatness of our Creator, you begin to understand how capable, wise, and loving our Creator is.